Welcome to Element 5 of TPP for Essex Partners. Element 5, Understanding Behaviour. We will explore the stress response, link this to what we already know about how the brain responds to stress or threat, and introduce the window of tolerance. We'll then look at how we reframe behaviour. We have listed all the content that we deliver in Elements 5 for the full Advanced Level TPP Schools and Settings Training, to give you an idea of the depth and breadth that it covers. The concepts highlighted in purple are the concepts that we will cover with you in our overview of element 5 today. First of all, we'd like you to consider what is the main purpose of behaviour. Behaviour is about communication. What is stress? Stress is a biological and psychological response experienced on encountering a threat that we feel we do not have the resources to deal with. Stress is not necessarily a bad thing. Without this brilliant ability to feel stress, humankind wouldn't have survived. Our ancient cave dwelling ancestors, for example, used the onset of stress to alert them to a potential danger, such as a saber toothed tiger. As you're aware, if you're a driver, a bit of stress in your driving test keeps you alert and more responsive to the environment, so that's a good thing. The stress response is one of the major topics studied in the rapidly growing field of psychology. Psychologists are interested in helping people find ways to combat stress and live healthier, more productive lives. By learning more about the fight or flight response, psychologists can help people explore new ways to deal with their natural reaction to stress. In TPP, you'll hear the word stressor, which is a stimulus or threat that causes stress, such as an exam, divorce, death of a loved one, moving house or loss of job. We tend to use this in place of the word trigger because it can be built up of a number of stressors rather than just one trigger that causes big emotions. We all need a healthy level of stress to help us be at our peak. Stress can take either of these two paths one of which is manageable and can actually have a positive benefit as a result of predictable, moderate and controlled positive stress, resulting in increased resilience. The other path, one of unpredictable, severe and prolonged stress, has the opposite effect, becoming toxic and can result in increased vulnerability. A positive stressor could be a driving test. A tolerable stressor could be GCSEs, for instance, the exam series which is buffered by support from teachers, parents, friends, etc. And toxic stress could be loss of a job, money issues, illness of self or family members and friends, etc. And particularly where there is no supportive relationships to help. Interpreting behaviour. How we interpret affects how we behave. This interpretation affects our language. How we talk about the child shapes how we see the child. Our behaviour and language has an effect on the child. And how we see the child shapes how the child sees themselves. Think about nonverbal cues too. A teaching example could be how your heart sinks when the challenging child enters the classroom when you really hope they'd be off school today. The child will pick up on nonverbal cues as much as verbal ones. We can interpret behaviour as layers of stress, giving us perspective which encourages thoughtfulness and helpfulness, rather than responding in a punishing and punitive way. Much of the time, the way we describe behaviour has little to do with the other person. It's more about how behaviour makes us feel. So when we describe a child's behaviour as annoying, this is usually more about the experience than the child's behaviour. We want you to take a moment to look at this image and think about what the boy is trying to communicate. He could be communicating a whole range of things, such as trying to hit someone, but he could also be trying to be Superman, he's upset, he's not learnt how to smile but suffering a fist bump, or offering the adult imaginary flowers. Please note that we need to be aware of cultural diversity and how preconceived ideas and stereotypes about differences can influence our interpretations. We would now like you to pause the webinar and click the link to the video 6 in element 5 of the video link handout that goes along with these webinars. 
This video is called the window of tolerance and is a term used to describe the zone of arousal in which a person is able to function most effectively when they are calm and engaged. When people are in this zone, they are typically able to readily receive, process and integrate information and otherwise respond to the demands of everyday life without much difficulty. This optimal window was first named as such by Daniel Siegel, but has since been used and written about extensively by an organisation named Beacon House. When a person is within their window of tolerance, it is generally the case that the brain is functioning well and can effectively process stimuli. That person is likely to be able to reflect, think rationally and make decisions calmly without feeling either overwhelmed or withdrawn. However, during times of extreme stress, people often experience periods of either hyper or hypo arousal. The video starts by reminding us of the development of the brain and the upstairs downstairs brain analogy that we looked at in previous elements. Here is the smoke alarm analogy. In this diagram, the yellow orange items are the reasonable manageable stresses that won't cause harm. The red are stresses that could cause harm. All of these can trigger the alarm, but not all of these are life threatening, so do not require the stress response. A smoke alarm is designed to alert us to danger or fire, but it cannot distinguish between steam of a shower, burnt toast or a house fire. While the first two examples are not real threats, the third is, but the response of the alarm is the same, an irritating, uncomfortable and difficult to ignore alarm. The stress response was designed to deal with feeling fear for our lives, but it's much more likely to be triggered by more complex and subtle concerns, such as internal threats in the form of worries. This is a model of the stages of arousal and the stress response. This curve shows the automatic survival responses that we go into when we perceive threat in the environment, whether the threat is real or just perceived. Peter Levine states that success doesn't mean winning, it means surviving and doesn't really matter how you get there. The object for survival is to stay alive until the danger has passed. And this is an instinctual drive we have that takes over everything else. This curve shows how stages of arousal change as stresses are increased or decreased. The calm engaged state is where learning and positive social interactions occur at their best. As stresses increase, the body will draw on the five F's for survival. Friend, engaging with others to connect and feel safe. Flock, joining in a group because there are more safety in numbers. Fight, going towards the perceived danger and fighting. Flight, moving away from the perceived danger. Freeze, getting stuck and immobilised. And flop, also known as shutdown, when all else fails the body shuts down and can disassociate until perceived threat has gone. Successfully used strategies, whether they are viewed as appropriate or not, will be reinforced and strategies employed but unsuccessfully will be less likely to be used in the future. To reframe the behaviour. Is it misbehaviour or is it a stress behaviour? By thinking of it as a stress behaviour, we're more inclined to seek solutions and find out the course of the stress rather than merely providing a punishment. Now we understand that the stress response is protective, innate and fast acting, what is really going on when we observe behaviours? On the left are typical things we might hear or even say to ourselves, but what's really going on? We've given an example for you. Now pause the video to think about what might really be going on for all the statements. And here are examples of possible answers. Unacceptable behaviour or a naughty child is understandable behaviour due to life experiences and it's an adaptive response. Avoidant is the child or young person in flight survival mode. Defiant, the child or young person is in fight survival mode, coping with the threat. Aggressive or violent is a stress response through fear and therefore protecting themselves. Attention seeking we describe as attachment or connection needing. They need time and attention for something in the moment. They do not feel safe and secure yet. Withdrawn is distress resulting in cautious behaviour. Rude or a smirk, for example, is a form of self-protection. 
I need you to know how I feel, so I'm going to make you feel like it too. So you will help me, or I don't think you like me or don't care. And not engaging, the child or young person doesn't feel safe yet. We have now come to the end of element five. Please be aware that the topic of trauma and emotional well-being can be emotive and it's important to look after your own well-being. There are some useful links for accessing support should you or someone else you know need it. You can find this slide in a downloadable copy alongside our TPP webinars.